Hello EU4 players, my name's Riemann, and today I want to talk about Austria. Playing as a Habsburg diplomatic powerhouse is a truly unique experience. Normally, I wouldn't do a nation spotlight on a major country like this. I typically reserve the spotlight for smaller nations that have some quirk about them that makes them a lot more interesting than you'd expect at first glance. However, as I was making the script for last week's episode, I kept being surprised by how many quirks and oddities Austria can take advantage of. A lot of their power is unlocked through events that only other countries can get. Moreover, the path Austria uses to expand is unique. For practically every other nation, diplomacy is used to support war, but with the Habsburgs, the reverse is true, and war is used to support diplomacy. By carefully balancing the delicate diplomatic situation, Austria can come to dominate Europe through things like the HRE and personal unions in a way that only a game like EU4 can model. In this video, I'll explain all the different options Austria has available to it, and I'll show you advanced tricks and strategies to help you on your quest to create a universal monarchy. In 1444, Austria is a mid-sized nation that's nestled a bit northeast of the Alps. They have 165 development to start, which puts them ahead of countries like Novgorod, but behind countries like Aragon. What makes them special is they have two unique advantages. The first is the Tyrol gold mine. This starts out with a measly base production of 4, and bringing that up to at least 10 should be a major priority for your early game Diplo points. This will give you a sizable monetary boost, and can comprise as much as 40% of your income in the early game. Sometime after 1460, you'll get an event called the Schwa's Silver Mine that gives a plus 1.0 goods produce modifier to the province, ensuring you'll have a continuous supply of ducats. The other advantage Austria starts with is the Emperorship of the Holy Roman Empire. The HRE will be the primary mid-game goal for an Austrian campaign, but for now it provides an ample supply of manpower and force limit, allowing you to have the largest army on the continent when you start out. These two bonuses let you punch far above your weight, which is necessary since you'll be meddling in countries' affairs all around Europe, from the steppes in the east to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, and pretty much everything in between. Austria's idealists should give you a clear picture of how they're meant to be played. They start with an extra 10% morale, and later on they'll add a few more bonuses to forts and discipline. But apart from an early game boost, there's nothing really special about them. Austria's army can be competent, but it will never be a true powerhouse. They also get a bonus to inflation reduction, which is helpful for the gold mine, and the interest per annum reduction, which can be interesting if you stack the modifier. But apart from these, and a minor bonus to conversion strength, the rest of Austria's ideas are oriented towards one goal, to play the diplomatic game in Europe. Let others wage war. Thou, happy Austria, marry. The Habsburgs win through marriages, unions, and political unification. Their main focus will always be diplomacy. Because diplomacy is such a critical part of their strategy, managing it well is essential early on. There's a series of very specific, deliberate actions you should take as you begin. First, you want to marry but not ally Bohemia. They should always start friendly. Then, you want to do nothing with Hungary. Don't ally them or marry them. Next, if you can, you want to marry but not ally Burgundy. Next, you want to marry and ally Poland. They usually start neutral. Next, you want to marry and ally Castile. They should always start friendly. Finally, you want to rival France, and you want to rival Venice. Now you might be thinking, this seems oddly specific, and you'd be right. Each of these setups is designed to take maximum advantage of events in other countries, and I'll explain all of them thoroughly. First up is Bohemia. They start in an interregnum, which used to be much more common in Europa Universalis. Because they used to be common, there's some code in the game that can resolve it in your favor. The interregnums for Bohemia, Hungary, and Poland are all supposed to be ended through events. However, they all have a chance to end without the event, where they will install a king with the dynasty of the largest nation that has a royal marriage with them. It's quite easy to take advantage of, and if the interregnum ends this way, they should always get a Habsburg without an heir. This gives you the perfect opportunity to use the Claim Throne action, which will give you an Enforce Union CB. Now, you need to watch Bohemia closely in the first few years, because the game won't give you a pop-up or anything that lets you know you can do this. You also need to act quickly if you do get an opportunity, because they can still get the event that is supposed to end the interregnum even if they have a ruler. If you see a guy named Podobrad on their throne and you haven't declared war by that point, then you've missed your chance. Now, later on I'll cover what you should do if this happens, because this won't be your only opportunity to pull Bohemia into a union. For right now, it should be noted that the ability to get Bohemia in the first few years is actually quite high. 
I reckon I got the chance in about 80% of my games, and I can get you off to a great start because of their extra troops and since they're an elector. Since you're not allied, you won't have to wait for a truce to end to go to war. You can do it the month after you claim their throne, which is crucial for speed. It's also worth looking at who's rivaled them and getting an alliance with them to bring them into the war. This is typically either Brandenburg, Saxony, or Bavaria, and can make things go a bit smoother even though they're not totally necessary, since you have enough troops to win a 1v1, and since Bohemia rarely gets strong allies themselves. You should refrain from calling in Poland, because the only way you could do so is by promising land, and if you give land, it will sap imperial authority later on since they're not part of the HRE. Whether you get Bohemia in a union or they get Podebrad first, after the first few years, it's time to move on to the second goal. Assuming your long-term goal is to reform the HRE, you'll next want to look at preventing the Shadow Kingdom event from firing. This is the event that removes Italy from the HRE if you don't conquer a few key provinces by 1490. The provinces in question are shown here, and are owned by Venice and the Pope. One of these nations might get an alliance with a powerful country, but if you're an advanced player that shouldn't be too difficult to deal with since you have a large army and powerful allies yourself. The real issue is aggressive expansion, since early game Italy has the biggest potential of spawning a coalition of any area in the game. Luckily, your first monarch has the careful expander for minus 10% AE, and Austria's traditions give you 30% better relations over time. Your first war should be with Venice, where you can try bringing in Milan if they're willing since Venice owns one of their cores. If you can get the three provinces you need and return Milan's core in one war, that's great, but don't push yourself too hard. You probably won't be able to occupy Venice's capital for war score since your navy is weak at this point, but taking at least a province or two can make your life easier going forward. Whatever happens, make sure you have the war wrapped up by 1455, because at that point it's time to switch attention to the east. Hungary gets an event sometime between 1455 and 1457 that determines what leader it will get. 75% of the time they'll choose to elect Matthias Hanyadi as king, which gives you a restoration of Union CB. And unlike Bohemia, you actually get an event informing you about this. The other 25% of the time they choose the option that just gives you a union over them for free, which is really nice. But I'll assume they went the other route, in which case you have 5 years to start a war with them to pull them under union by force. This is why it was important not to ally them, so you don't have to truce break. Hungary is more powerful than Bohemia was, but at this point you should have enough favors with Poland to bring them in, and even if you don't, you should still have enough troops to beat them outright. I've consistently found this war to be much easier than the one with Bohemia, and when you win, you'll be able to add your second union in the first 30 years of the game. Now at this point, I want to pause and talk about contingencies. What should you do if the plan goes off the rails? Every game is going to be different, and there's always a chance that RNG goes against you or some other weird events happen. Well, first off, you can always re-roll. If you're not opposed to that sort of thing, you can just start a new game to try again, as most of the RNG you should be worried about comes in the first few years. If Poland rivals you, you can see that immediately. If you don't get a PU over Bohemia, that should also be apparent by 1450. After that, the need for re-rolling drops off dramatically because you should always be able to get a union with Hungary. Heck, if you really want to, you can keep safe scumming until Hungary chooses the option that gives you the union for free, if that's your style. Personally though, I try to stay away from re-rolling and safe scumming because I think responding to things not going your way is part of the fun of EU4. If you're like me, then I'll list a few ways you can get things back on track. First, if you miss your chance to go for an early union on Bohemia, you can get a mission after 1500 that lets you do it anyways. This is how you're supposed to get a union on them. Likewise, if for some reason you can't get a union on Hungary, you'll get a mission to enforce it later on as well. I'll describe both of these missions later in the video. Next, if Poland chooses to rival you early on, you can smack them in a war and force them to remove you as a rival. Then you can ally them. This could be difficult, but you really don't need to do it before 1600. Finally, if you can't get a royal marriage with Burgundy, don't worry about it because it rarely ends up mattering anyways. With contingencies dealt with, we can get back to the game. Getting a PU on Hungary will take until about 1460, and from then until 1490, your focus should be on reigning in Italy if you think it's within your reach. Do another war with Venice if they still have one of the required provinces, and then turn to deal with the Papal State. The Pope will take two wars for both war score and aggressive expansion. If you have unions on Bohemia and Hungary at this point though, the war should be getting easier and easier even if the Pope manages to get an ally with someone like France. 
It's helpful to full annex them, because when you spit them out, the relations will reset. You definitely don't want to hold on to Rome as a Catholic, because that hurts your Diplo rep. Take the necessary provinces, take the decision to reign in Italy, then spit out the Pope, who will now be a prince of the HRE. Next, the final way you can quickly accrue power in the early game is by the Burgundian inheritance. If you're lucky, you've already gotten it by this point, but there's a chance you haven't. This event splits Burgundy between you and France, provided a few conditions are met. You should get the HRE portion, as long as Burgundy doesn't have a marriage with Castile or anyone in the HRE with four or more provinces except you. If they do, you're far more likely to get the inheritance as long as you have a marriage with them as well. But it's actually quite rare for them to have marriages with other valid countries. As for how you get the event to actually fire, it's mostly luck-based. However, you can try to force it if it's 1490 and you have nothing better to do. The way you do so is by declaring war and occupying most of the land so you get a high war score. Doing this increases the chance for the event to fire to where it has a mean time to happen of about 6 years if their ruler is a general, they have no heir or made him a general, and the war score is over 75. If you sit on them like this for long enough, it has a good chance of occurring. The inheritance is one of those things that's nice to have, but if you don't get it, then don't worry too much. It can't happen after 1500, so if Burgundy is still alive at that point, you may want to break it apart from its subjects so it doesn't drain imperial authority anymore. After 1500, you'll want to focus more on the Empire and on defeating Protestantism. If you're successful, you'll be basically unchallenged. Someday I plan on doing a full guide on how to unite the HRE since there's a lot to dissect there. For right now, Austria still has a few tricks up its sleeve that are worth discussing. The first is those missions I mentioned earlier that let you get a union over Bohemia and Hungary. This is a great alternative path if you didn't get them in the first pass. For both of them, it has to be after 1500. For Bohemia, they have to have less than 140 development. When you take the mission, it will give you a restoration of Union CB for 25 years which you can use. For Hungary, on the other hand, they have to have less than 200 development and one province in the areas of Northern Transylvania, Southern Transylvania, Slovakia, or Affold must not be owned by Hungary. I assume the expectation is that the Ottomans would have taken the province, but it's perfectly acceptable if you're the one who does so, making this mission really easy to get. It too gives you a Restoration of Union CB, which you can use for 25 years. The next opportunity is with Poland, who, by now, might have transformed into the Commonwealth. You should take the action to support your dynasty for their throne. Since you have high relations and absurdly high diplo rep, you should succeed easily, and each time you do, you'll get a fair amount of monarch points. Sometime after 1600, they'll get an event chain that will allow them to abolish the elective monarchy, and if you won the last election, Habsburgs will now rule Poland as undisputed kings. This is a very easy way to spread your dynasty, and can quickly lead to a personal union. You have two options. If you have over 80 trust with them, they won't set you as a rival, so you can break your alliance and wait for them to not have an heir, then claim the throne. Or you can keep the alliance, wait for them to not have an heir, claim the throne, and just truce break, which is what I did. Either way, getting a union like this will secure your eastern flank against any aggression. The other easy opportunity to spread your dynasty is with Spain or Castile. They can get an event called a strategic marriage, where they'll get Habsburgs if they have no heir, they have a marriage with you Austria, you're both a rival of France, and France has rivaled you both back. The chance for this occurring is quite high once the Iberian wedding fires because there won't be many options for Spain or France to rival except for each other. This is why it's a good idea to ally Castile at the start of the game, and why you shouldn't completely destroy France before this event has a chance to fire. In my game, the Iberian wedding never happened, so I just helped Castile eat Aragon normally. When the event fires and they have Habsburgs, you just use the same method you used on Poland and you'll get a union quite quickly. If you get most or all of the unions listed in this guide, you'll be pretty much invincible. Your subjects will swarm over your enemies, and you'll have to do very little of the actual fighting yourself. You can revoke in the HRE to make your advantage even more pronounced, and at that point Europe is basically your playground. Austria has a lot of potential that's hidden away in other nations, and unlocking it is always an interesting challenge. Whether you're looking to conquer the world, go for a one faith, or just have a fun game, Austria is a unique option you should consider. My name's Riemann, and until next time, thanks for watching.